Hi, welcome to the Hutchinson Art Center's online art camp. My name is Hannah Beam and I'm your instructor. Today we're talking about how do you understand art? Maybe you've seen some art before and you've been confused by it. You didn't understand what it meant. We're going to talk about how you can understand art today. So did you know that you can study art? Did you know that you can learn about it like any other academic subject? Just like math and English are things you can study and learn more about, art can be academic too, which is really, really fun. So when you look at art, the first thing you do is look at it. Look about it and make an observation. What do you see? How does it make you feel? What do you notice about the art piece? It can be the simplest thing. You can notice that it uses a lot of lines. Maybe you notice that it uses certain colors or shapes. Maybe it has some repetition. Maybe you see people or animals or a landscape. Look for those kinds of things, even the most obvious things. And then once you look and find some things that you observe, you think about them and see if there's any kind of interpretation that you could make about it. So you look and then you think, and then you can even discuss it with people and talk about it. When you talk about it, you can compare ideas and see if you have similar ideas or if you thought something different. Even if you thought something different doesn't mean that one person is wrong. You can both be right within your interpretations that you're thinking about with an art piece. So to practice, we can use one of the examples I made for today. We're gonna to be working with collage. So I have this collage here. So, what do you see? You start by looking. I see corn, I see a man and a woman, I see lots of faces, people on a motorcycle, I see a fish, and I see dogs with party hats, I see a sign that says eat here, and I see that it's got some zigzaggy shapes in the background. So I've started by observing, by looking at this piece and noticing things. The next step is thinking. What do I think about these things? Well, maybe this has something to do with people because there's a lot of people on it. So if I think it has something to do with people, I could ask, why do I think that? I think that because there's a lot of people on the piece, but there's also animals and food. How could those relate to people? Well, people eat food, people eat fish, people have fish for pets, people have dogs for pets. There's all sorts of different things you could look at and think, and none of the things that you think about this could be wrong. When you talk to people about it, you might find new interpretations for it. Somebody else might look at this, and the first thing they see is the motorcycle, and so maybe they'll think it has more to do with riding motorcycles or going places where you can eat food and see fish and meet people. So there's lots of different ways you can look at and interpret art. But it always starts with looking and then thinking, and then you can talk about it and repeat the process to find some kind of interpretation for the art. So today, we're gonna be making a collage piece. Collage is fun because it can be a bunch of random things like this one all put together that you can find some random meaning for. When I made this piece, I just picked out things that I thought looked like fun. I liked this nun hanging out with a clown. This fish looked really cool. And who doesn't love dogs and party hats? I also thought this lady holding a pomegranate was really fun and kind of silly. And I liked the colors in this background, so I just picked a bunch of random stuff that I liked and put it together in a way I thought looked good. That's one awesome way that you can make a collage. Another way you can do it is expanding a picture. So I found this cute little picture of a dog sitting on a couch, and I cut it out, and I added a whole bunch of dogs, like a whole litter of puppies, one hiding behind the couch over here, this one's gonna jump up on the couch, these two are hanging out on the couch, this one I just drew as the reverse of this one. And I used Sharpies to add details to the picture that I found so that it would match the rest of it. And then I just made up all this background. So that's a really fun way that you can do a collage even if you wanna use just one picture and make it all your own idea expanding the picture. 
You could also take a bunch of things and make them into something totally new. So with this one, I found a big picture of a hamburger and a picture of some corn and some pasta and a fork. And I decided that a little farmer would live in this hamburger house with a corn cob chimney and that pasta would be the sun. So, and then I drew this little man on a different piece of paper and cut him out and colored him. I used oil pastels on the outside of this to color it and some in here too for the door to add more interest to the picture. So, there's three different ways you can do a collage. You can combine things and make something new and creative. You can expand a picture or you can just put some random things together. So, I'm gonna show you how to do this. I have a piece of white copy paper to be my background. You could start with any color paper though. You could use construction paper or pattern paper, or you could even use the a full page from a magazine as your background. But you could also take this and glue it onto another background. Sometimes working with cardstock can be nice because it's sturdier, but I just am gonna use my copy paper. So I really liked this cover from Better Homes and Gardens because of all the pretty colors and these flowers. So I'm gonna use this as my background here and I am gonna glue it on my white paper because I kind of like this little border that's going on. So let me get my glue stick. Again, always remember to have something that you can get glue on, some kind of table cover or paper behind it. When you glue, it's most important to make sure that you get the edges really good in the corners. And then make sure you get some in the middle here. Okay. Try to make sure that's centered how I want it. I could off-center it if I want to, but I kind of liked having the neat border. So then if there's any areas that need a little extra glue, you can kind of peel the corners up and get that extra glue on there so that everything sticks down really nice. Then I also found this picture with some doorknobs that I thought had some really fun colors and textures. And so let's see. I know I want to use this in my background. Let's see what else I have to work with. I found this fun bed. I found these pictures of these little, this little dog I thought was cute. And this is my favorite, this little grandma baby. So cute. So I'm gonna really wanna use that. And I found these pictures of waffles. I haven't cut it out yet. So I need to go ahead and cut out my waffles. I'm gonna keep a little bit of syrup. There we go, got my waffles cut out. Let's see, we'll use these on the next one. So, I think it kind of like this there. Maybe put the bed, maybe we'll just put the bed kind of crazy at an angle here. Mm, featuring waffles. Let's see, maybe that over there. I definitely want my baby. I don't like the bed quite like that. Something like that. Okay, got an idea now. So I'll try to keep these in the same order here. This one's in the back, so gonna get this glued down. But that's 
that's okay because when we glue it on, we can glue it on next to each other and you won't even be able to tell. In one of our other lessons, we talked about making mistakes on purpose and how you can work with your mistakes and have them work within the piece. So we'll do that for this piece too. So let's see there. Let's see. And we'll just put her little face back on there. Just kind of line it up good. And that can happen when you're doing collage with magazine papers because they're pretty thin. So you might have pieces that rip, but that's okay because you can just put them really close together and you can barely tell that they were ever ripped. My poor little baby. She's still really cute. So a collage can be as simple as that. I'll also show how you can take a collage and make it into something new. So I have this avocado here and I'm just gonna glue it right in the center of the page. And you know what, maybe we'll off center it just a little bit. So that's a little bit more interesting there. Okay. And when I saw this avocado, I said to myself, this avocado needs to be a person. So I'm going to make a little avocado person mm -hmm. out of this. So to color on top of magazine paper, you might notice that it's really slick, which means that some things aren't going to work well on it. Markers are hard to use on magazine paper because the magazine paper kind of resists the markers. What works really well on magazine paper are permanent markers like these or oil pastels. Both of these work really well. Paint can also work, uh, tempera or acrylic paint. Watercolor paint will kind of beat up and be kind of hard to use on it too. I'm gonna start with permanent marker. And whee. Giving him some arms and some legs. Let's see, he's really happy, so he's got his eyes closed. I'm gonna kind of use this shape here for his mouth. And I'm gonna make this into a little sash that he's wearing. that says he's the yummiest. So he has a fancy sash to prove that he's the yummiest. And I think he needs a hat. So let's draw a little hat. What kind of hat? Hmm. There's got a little hat. And how about some shoes? Okay. Now, where's he at? He just won a prize, so I think he's on a stage. So we'll draw the lines for the stage and maybe there's like a big curtain over here. And he's got a spotlight on him because he's just won a big prize. And everyone's cheering. Cheer. Yay. There's a whole crowd of people down here cheering. So these are their arms. And he's just so happy. And then you could add color to this too with the oil pastels. Maybe we'll make our spotlight yellow. And it's kind of washing over him, so we'll let it kind of overlap. And he's wearing a red hat to match his sash. And 
and we'll add a little bit more red on his sash here. Just kind of add some pizzazz. Maybe make his tongue kind of red. There. And I think his arms need to be green to match him. And he's got orange shoes. I forgot the brim of his hat, didn't I? Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. There we go. So you can take a picture and make it into something new and fun, too. You can also expand a picture. So I have this one of flowers. flowers kind of expand this picture let's see And this is in like a whole field. So there's like some hills back here and we're outside. So there's the sun and some clouds. And maybe right up front here, let's see, is a really close up picture of this little ladybug. And she's hanging out. by all these beautiful flowers. keep on adding to your picture and expanding the horizons of your photo. So there's lots of different ways that you can create art and lots of different ways to interpret art. Sometimes you interpret art as you make it. So remember, when you're looking at a piece of art and you're kind of confused by it, start out by just looking at it. Look at it and observe anything that you see, even the simplest little thing. Think about it. Think about why they did it that way. What could it mean? And ask yourself these questions. And then talk to people about it too and compare your ideas. So, I hope you have fun creating today. <laughs>